Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gustavo Zaposnik. I'm one of the I'm the editor in chief for the World Stroke Academy uh, for the World Stroke Organization. Today we are interviewing Professor Craig Anderson. He's the principal investigator of the recently published uh, Interact 3 trial in uh, uh, Lancet. Craig, if you can introduce yourself and thank you very much for joining. A great privilege. Thanks, Gustavo. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Professor Craig Anderson. I head up a global brain health research program at the George Institute for Global Health at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. I still practice as a neurologist at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. And as mentioned, I'm co-principal and investigator for the recently published Interact 3 clinical trial. Thank you, Craig. So the uh, first question is, can you summarize what are the uh, you know uh, uh, important findings from Interact 3? Well, the whole purpose of Interact 3 was to uh, determine whether combining several interventions together, which have plausible benefits uh, to patients with intracerebral hemorrhage, put them together as a package or a quality improvement uh, bundle, care bundle, which we would apply to hospitals would improve outcome. And we have shown that. So the, uh, the four components of our care bundle were all time dependent and target based. That was early intensive blood pressure lowering, glycemic control, rapid uh, correction of any fever or pyrexia, and the rapid reversal of warfarin anticoagulation with fresh frozen plasma or PCC. Um, this was mainly driven by blood pressure lowering, um, but uh, all of the uh, interventions were put together as a package and we worked very carefully uh, over several years to improve the process of care for patients who were admitted to hospital. So conventionally, you do a clinical trial, you'd randomised individual patients, but with our clinical trial, which we uh, the design we used is called stepped wedge cluster randomized clinical trials. We randomize hospitals. Everybody starts off in a usual care uh, control phase, and then they are randomly moved across to implement the uh, care bundle as uh, part of routine care. The advantage of this design is that you are testing an implementation and uh, you uh, can avoid a lot of the selection bias or the cherry picking to put patients into the trial by including everybody who comes through the hospital during the uh, implementation phase or in all phases of the study. And we can also include patients very quickly. So we didn't have to get individual consent for the intervention that was approved as part of usual care. We just got the intervention for the follow-up. So it gave us a lot of advantages. And so the power, uh, the powerful message behind this is that if you change systems of care with protocols and active management for intracerebral hemorrhage, you can improve outcomes uh, for this very serious uh, form of stroke. Thank you, Craig, uh, uh, very much appreciated. So essentially you develop like a, a recipe that can be implemented in the uh, in, in emerging countries primarily. And, that you, and you demonstrated that that intervention was able to decrease morbidity and mortality, 16% reduction in mortality, is that right? Amazing, it's hard to believe. Uh, we had uh, uh, 16%, uh, 14, sorry, 14% 14. reduction in the primary endpoint, which was bad outcome according to the shift in scores on the modified Rankin scale. So that's mm. a, the uh, 0.86 for an ordinal or uh, uh, shift in scores for bad outcome and, um, and uh, uh, similarly for uh, mortality. I was sharing, you know, some of the results you know, from the publication. And as you know, there are not many interventions or I would consider a behavioral intervention because the intervention was the instruction and a recipe 
for physicians to act on patients and then to be able so patients to you know have an uh, 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 um, a target blood pressure, a target uh, blood sugar levels, uh, hypo or, or being afebrile, and also the uh, um, and uh, uh, reversing anticoagulation. So there are not many interventions or behavioral interventions in medicine that decrease mortality. Not even even there are some in schizophrenia and some in weight loss, but still nothing so dramatic in such a large trial uh, for intracerebral hemorrhage. So my question is, when we look at the, the results, and here you can see the, that the mean, uh, the baseline blood pressure was in both group 177 systolic and 99 diastolic. And then you show that this reduction start very early on. So a few, less than one hour, the curves are starting to separate. Correct. Can, can Correct. you comment on, on that? So do you think that this is an, the early aggressive management is probably associated with the long-term uh, uh, outcomes? Well, look, we, we, were, uh, we looked at, we had um, access to these blood pressure data during the conduct of the study. It was one way that we assessed the fidelity of the intervention and it was a way that we could give feedback to sites to push them to uh, improve their management of blood pressure and uh, glucose control and fever. So we saw these data emerging during the study. And to be quite honest, we thought that the uh, difference between intervention and control was very small. We were rather sceptical that this would have such a powerful intervention. And I think it's very important, therefore, to um, to uh, acknowledge that the what we were testing was a care bundle. It was the package. And although it was driven by blood pressure lowering, we worked with the hospitals to implement systems of care around four strategies. And so um, the interpretation is that bundling things together is better than single interventions for um, intracerebral hemorrhage and having organized systems and what that does in terms of the interaction and behaviors uh, between nursing staff and doctors and the, pa and the patients, their discharge planning. Um, there are probably indirect me measurements that we can uh, measure inter interventions we can measure, but then there's other things that we can't measure that resulted in the uh, positive outcome. Um, and um, it's very much the same as um, acute stroke units. What 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 works in an acute stroke stroke unit? But we do know in other contexts, organised systems of care do better than disorganised systems of care and evidence-based bundles do better um, from the point of view of synergies, a bit like a polypill. And, um, you know, we've spent 40 years doing randomized controlled trials in intracerebral hemorrhage, very conventionally, looking at single interventions uh, with, um, with poor success. And um, Interact 3 now is the first trial that showed to show that if we can put you know, ordinary physiological control um, interventions together as active management, organised care, it, it does uh, benefit uh, this um, patient group and all types of patients. I think that's very important is that for our trials, Interact 2 and ATAC 2, which um, people are familiar with, we purposely excluded patients which were the more severe. Uh, or who would go on to surgery because we thought that would confound our ability to look at a, a medical intervention, which was blood pressure. And so we've lacked a lot of knowledge. And again, I have to declare to you that I never thought that blood pressure lowering would be powerful enough to give a benefit in people who have a big intracerebral hemorrhage. But we showed in our trial that it's all types of patients who benefit and, and perhaps the more severe ones, uh, including those for surgery, uh, benefit more. So I think Interact 3 is 
It's a system of care that we should apply to all of our patients. It's not just choosing particular patients where we think there may be more benefits than others. This is background care that should be applied uh, routinely in our patients. And this is, appears to be a very non-expensive intervention. Is that right? I don't know. Do you have costing data or? Yeah, yeah. We have got we we've collected the costing data. It will take us several months to uh, look at that uh, analysis. The informal feedback, um, because that was another unique aspect of our study. We did a process evaluation during the course of our study. Again, trying to understand the uh, barriers to implementing the care bundle and working working uh, with the hospital staff to overcome those barriers, to, like, like a conventional implementation study, trying to ensure that we can get the, successfully get the intervention in the hospitals. And the feedback we had there was in very low resource settings, the pumps, the insulin pumps are quite expensive, the blood pressure medication we take for granted in a high income country with a universal healthcare system uh, is low cost, but again, in a fee for service and low resource setting, blood pressure lowering pills or intravenous blood pressure lowering medication is expensive. So there are some costs and these issues will need to be considered as we hopefully now moving forward can work uh, across the globe to implement this uh, package as a system of care. Thank you, Craig. I, and, and, you know, I, I share and witness the excitement when you did, uh, you presented uh, last week or the week before at the European Stroke Congress. Uh, uh, it was uh, quite an amazing how, you know, the people were very exciting, just excited to see uh, the uh, positive uh, results for, you know, such severe condition like uh, intracerebral hemorrhage. And, and also, you gave us a, a great example of leadership, uh, Craig. You know, you acknowledge everyone, you know, who were the investigators, uh, the site investigators or country investigators who were also, uh, you know, with you. And I think that that recognition reveals some generosity when you are, you know, doing research. So and I like to thank you very much for, for that experience, actually. Yeah, thanks very much, Gustavo. Look, you know, I had the opportunity to present the results, but these studies, international randomized controlled trials, and particularly Interact 3, was an enormous team effort. We had many challenges along the way. Uh, you'll see that the study uh, was caught up, uh, like uh, other areas with COVID-19, that threatened our funding, it threatened uh, um, the rollout of the study, the collection of data, we were able to get through that. We had seed funding from uh, collaborators in China, which were able to leverage uh, international funding from the UK government. So this was an enormous uh, team effort and, uh, and I'm very grateful for the commitment over several years uh, to make this study a reality. So Craig, the last question is related to the, uh, if you can, uh, uh, provide an advice, imagine to somebody who is an internist, an ICU physician, or a neurologist practicing in, you know, very remote areas with limited resources, what would be your advice and what's your vision moving forward in the next five years or ten? Well, I think we've all, uh, all in encountered clinicians uh, in the field, have all encountered the situation where uh, the diagnosis of intracerebral hemorrhage has been made in a patient, the white spot of blood on the CT scan. There's a fluster of activity as to whether we should call the neurosurgeon. And in my, uh, in my healthcare environment, the neurosurgeons are very reluctant to intervene, uh, only in the very severe patients with um, an opinion of a good outcome. And then all the activity drops off and uh, there does seem to be uh, less urgency for intracerebral hemorrhage than we have now for acute ischemic stroke. So I think we've shown now that active management interventions to manage physiological control um, and hopefully we'll have other interventions that we can add in in a more coordinated um, 
system of care from the emergency department, interaction with neurosurgeons, critical care people, and uh, neurologists on the ward with, um, with uh, a uniform and agreed systems of care. Thank you very much, uh, Greg. Very much appreciated. So the take-home message is, if we are on call tonight and I see somebody with an intracerebral hemorrhage, I should apply promptly the whole package, lower the blood pressure, lower the glucose, and trying to keep the patient with, uh, 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 with uh, no uh, uh, fever and also reverse the anticoagulation if uh, that's required. That's right. That's right. We have still more work to do, but now we've got a foundation in which we can move forward with a new attitude towards intracerebral hemorrhage. Thank you very much, uh, Craig. I'm uh, very proud of uh, your work and uh, congrats. Thank you very much. Goodbye.